All right. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, this is episode two of the Chimera Conversations, where I just talk about Star Wars. That's the whole reason I made this thing. We are filmed, and well, I should say recorded, live in Chewie's Meme Town, the Discord. Uh, I will put the link to the Discord in the description, so if you guys want to join and catch a live recording of the podcast, it is going to be every Wednesday night. So, first thing to talk about, of course, is Boba Fett, episode two. Book of Boba Fett, episode two. Um, Clocking in at 52 minutes. I think this is probably one of the best episodes of Star Wars that has come out in the last couple of years. Um, It did absolutely great with world building for Boba Fett. Um, I was really worried uh, going into this show. I was worried that they weren't going to really tell us what Boba Fett has been up to for five years. Um, I just expected them to be like, yeah, Boba Fett just chilling on the sand dunes of Tatooine for five years. So they are doing a great job with explaining what he's been up to. And so starting the episode, they trick the assassin guy uh, into giving up information. Uh, they scare him with the Rancor pit, which, of course, there hasn't been a Rancor in there. Um, so, got him. Epic troll moment for Boba Fett. Um, I wasn't expecting Boba Fett to have a great sense of humor, but we see that quite a few times, that he he does have a good sense of humor. Uh, so after that, they go see the may- mayor and talk with him, and they're like, hey, bro, what gives? Like, you sent assassins after us? And the mayor was like, an assassin? And then they shoot the guy. And they're like, oh, well, you know, no assassins allowed here. No hut assassins. Um, so Boba goes to the back to the cantina Finds out information uh, from the Twi'lek chick, and she's like, oh, um, yeah, the uh, twins, uh, Jabba's cousins, um, have laid claim to his kingdom. And then uh, they show up, and they're as hut as ever. Um, So Boba... You know, confronts them. And they're, of course, like, yo, this is technically our land. And Boba Fett gives the most Boba Fett reply and says, don't care. Basically, he tells the twins to cope. Um... Then, uh, I just blanked on his name. Uh, big, big black Wookiee, uh, black curse, curse, Cursantin. There it goes. There it is. Black Cursantin, uh, from that Dr. Afra comics. He walks in, um, Boba Fett isn't really phased by it. Uh, But it is interesting that they did choose to bring a comic character into live action. Um, Not the biggest fan of Dr. Aphra. I've I've dabbled in in her comics. Um, A lot of people think that this is setting up for maybe Dr. Aphra to eventually make a live action appearance. Uh, Like I said, I couldn't really care less about Dr. Afra. So, um, then we get a 
great little flashback to um, Boba training Tusken Raiders how to uh, board and attack a train. And that was probably one of the most exciting uh, Star Wars scenes that's happened in a long time. Um, I'd put it up there almost the same with seeing Luke Skywalker come in with that like same level of excitement. Um, so they, of course, uh, it's the Pike Syndicate. They're running the train. And the Pikes, of course, own Kessel. So Boba Fett is like, you got any spice? And they're, they're like, what, what spice? And then immediately they drop a box of spice. And he's like, that's, that's spice. Um, basically, he sets it up to where all these crime syndicates now have to pay the Tusken Raiders to cross their land. And they actually, I, I think they mention that in The Mandalorian, that they have to pay for for crossing the sand dunes. And uh, Boba Fett makes the um, other bounty hunter guy who's trying to get into the guild, he makes him give him his uh, binoculars. So that's really cool that we get to see that Boba Fett is the one that kind of set that up. So... Um, the episode ends with uh, Boba Fett getting his black robes that we see him wearing in The Mandalorian Season 2. Uh, we see him craft a, a Joffy, Goffy, however you pronounce it. I guess it's like the peanut butter. Um, the Goffy stick. Joffy stick. Yeah. Like just like the GIF peanut butter, is it GIF or is it GIF? No wait, oh crap, that's like the internet thing too. Whatever, um, pronounce it how you like. I doesn't really matter. Uh, so he he crafts his own his own little beading stick. Um, and then. They do a little sacred little dance around the fire. And it, like I said, it it was a great episode. I truly think that it might be one of the best episodes of the, what should we call it? Is it the Favroverse of Star Wars? <laughs> All of the John Favreau ins inspired Star Wars, um, yeah, I think it's one of the one of the best episodes that we've we've gotten in the Star Wars television shows. Um, however, I have seen, and it surprised me that the Book of Boba Fett is not getting as well received as. I thought it was going to be. It's kind of getting trashed on by a lot of people. A lot of people don't like it. I think on Rotten Tomato right now, it is sitting at like a 74%, which that's not bad. But that's not exactly great either. Um, and I've seen a lot of, you know videos on YouTube uh, saying, oh, Disney has once again failed with Star Wars. Um, I saw one video say Boba Fett, more like Beta Fett. <laughs> uh, I don't quite understand that uh, frame of thought. But uh, everyone can have their own opinions. But I, I think that the book of Boba Fett is it's it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. It is building the world of Star Wars. It's giving us 
more about the Tusken Raiders, which we've never gotten before. Maybe in the comics a little bit. Maybe in the books a little bit. But we've never seen it on screen. I love Star Wars books as much as, as anybody does. But I personally think that the television shows and the movies hold more weight in the long run. More people are going to watch the shows and the movies than are ever going to read a book. Just like when Dave Filoni retconned a bunch of stuff when he did the Bad Batch, when he showed Kanan at uh, Order 66, and there was a comic series that showed exactly that. Kanan and Order 66. And John Favreau, not John Favreau, Dave Filoni comes in and does away with that comic and is like, okay, this is how it happened. Because the television shows hold more weight than a comic book does. So, um, like, like I said, it's just, it's just great Great world building. I love that we're getting more of Boba Fett. And Boba Fett had a solid run in the Legends continuity. Um, you know, he became Mandalore, essentially. Trained Han Solo's daughter to basically kill her brother. That's pretty sick. Um... I don't know. Uh, and I think it's a little too early to judge the, the show. Um, it's two seasons, or it's two episodes. It's out right now. Uh, there's a lot that could happen. There, I, I think the show is great right now. Um, but, I'm going to be honest, it could get worse. <laughs> Like, I'm, I have, you know, the highest hopes for this show, that it's going to continue. After this episode, I have the highest hopes. However, it could go down the drain. So, that's, that's always a, a, a real, real possibility. Um... I'm going to ask my live Discord chat if they have anything that they would like to ask me about the show or have any juicy comments. So go for it, guys. Go. And you guys can see the live chat if you join the Discord. Just plugging it in. Join the Discord. Discord. That, okay. They're just saying hi, Chet. That's not what I meant. Okay, they're doing an awful job. So we're just going to move on to my next uh, talking point. Um, let's see. I was going to avoid um, talking about uh, Disney and running amok with Star Wars, which they often do. Um, however, I, I feel like it is appropriate to talk about the Galactic Star Cruiser. Um, if you're unaware of what the Galactic Star Cruiser is, is it's the uh, new resort experience at Walt Disney World. And it is a two-day immersive experience where you are staying at a hotel that is completely immersive and you get to basically live your own Star Wars adventure. Um, first takeaway is that it is insanely expensive. I think for two people going is like $4,000 for two, for two nights. That's even depending on which uh, place you or which uh, experience you pick. So, 
two thousand dollars is a or four thousand dollars is a lot that can get you like two trips to Disney for like six days. Um, as someone who goes to Disney World a lot, it is a absolutely ridiculous price. Um, so I'm sure most everybody has seen the Galactic Star Cruiser video um, that was so negatively received that Disney had to delete the video because it was having such a negative effect on people canceling their stay that they literally deleted the video. Um, I think I read an article saying that probably close to like 50% of people have canceled their reservations. I don't think that's quite true. I know there are a lot of people that did in fact cancel. However, I don't believe it's 50%. Because there are people who have a lot of money and who are definitely going to go through with this. Um, now, I don't want to say that, you know, Star Cruiser is bad. I I don't want to, you know, people, this was someone's job to make this. And it looks bad from what we've seen. It looks bad. But that could be just be from bad advertising bad directorial sense in filming the little glimpses of it that we've gotten but um i truly think we should save our res or our our opinions until we see how it actually is like we wait for people to go we wait for people to actually review it instead of judging it completely off of a couple of youtube videos now i'm not saying that those people who canceled aren't justified because that's you know six thousand dollars and that's completely their decision um but I don't know. I think Galaxy's Edge at uh, Disney is great. Um, I wish it wasn't themed after the sequels, but it's understandable why it is, because Disney's trying to push their um, movies. Um, the rides there are amazing. Um, Smuggler's Run is l legitimately you're flying the Millennium Falcon, and that is amazing um and rise of the resistance is possibly the most immersive and crazy ride that is at the disney parks um i i mean it's an absolute blast uh so disney has done good at the parks with star wars before um I just don't know if Galactic Star Cruiser is going to be it. Um, one of the YouTubers I watch, I can't can't think of his name right now, uh, made a good point that if Galactic Star Cruiser fails, Disney might end up just canning the part of immersive, like the, all the immersive crap, and just make it a Star Wars themed resort. Um, that's perfectly fine um, that would also make the price uh, go down significantly um, let's see what's what's next all right so Star Wars Eclipse Star Wars Eclipse if you are unaware of what Star Wars Eclipse is is it is the new Star Wars game, one of the new Star Wars games, uh, that is coming out in the future. Um, it is 
let's just say it might be in trouble. Um, it's by Quantic Dream. And uh, Quantic Dream, uh, they've done great games. Quantic Dream did... Um, what is it? I'm blinking. Uh, Detroit Beyond Human. They did Detroit Beyond Human. They did uh, Heavy Rain. Um, stuff like that. So they've done great games. Um, however, their creator um, is is a little problematic. Uh, he's supposedly said some. Uh, dicey things in the past uh, that has led a lot of big Star Wars accounts on like YouTube, uh, like Star Wars, um, Star Wars Explained. Uh, there's a whole slew of other ones uh, that have decided to boycott the game and are just refusing to talk about it at all. Um, because of the creator being kind of, you know, maybe not the greatest guy in the world. Um, also, uh, I read some articles saying that they were having some issues with the engine for the game. Um, that they were having problems actually developing the game itself. This could end badly for um, the game. I mean, Disney could choose that it's not worth it. Cancel it. I, however, um, really do hope that everything goes smoothly with this game. Um, we don't have anything to judge it off of other than a cinematic trailer. The cinematic trailer is great, but it's you can't really judge a game off of a cinematic trailer. So um, I'm also hoping here. I mean, in at least the next uh, couple months, that we get more video game announcements. Uh, because we need Star Wars video games. Uh, there hasn't been one since Fallen Order, I think. Um, I think that's right. Fallen Order was the last one. Um, there's the... Uh, what's the... What's the... Oh, crap. The Nintendo Switch one that's coming out. Uh, Hunters? Star Wars Hunters? Is that what it is? Um, yeah, that's a kid's game. So, I that I don't know if I'd really count that as a actual Star Wars game. I've seen a lot of gameplay of it, and it's... It's a kid's game. It's also going to be available on the phone. So, it's a Nintendo Switch game, and it's a uh, mobile game. So, it's it's for kids. Um, other than that, there is nothing on the radar for Star Wars games. We can only assume that Fallen Order... Two is in the works, or whatever they call it. Um, but, you know, we don't have confirmation. Um, there is, however, uh, rumors of a... I don't know if you guys have seen this, but there have been rumors of possibly a new Battlefront in the works. Battlefront 3, maybe, I don't know. Um, so, this is 
only confirmed off of the social medias of the voice actress of Iden Versio and uh, whatever the other guy's name was. I can't even. I can't even remember what what the other guy's name was in it, the one that she ends up like marrying. Um, they have been on set recording. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Del Mico. That's it. Um, both of those voice voice actors and actress have been on the same set recording voice lines and doing facial and mocap together on the on the same on the same set uh so i don't i don't want to you know confirm that they're probably playing their characters again but it it's a strong possibility that they could very well be doing battlefront 3 um i don't believe after how uh, Battlefront 2's campaign was received that they would jump and do another Iden Versio campaign. Um, that would kind of be... I don't know. Could you involve Iden Versio in the campaign? Yes, you could. Um, but I don't think she should be the main focus of it um so there is let's just say there's a lot of potential in doing another battle battlefront game um first of all i would hope it's the same developers as battlefront 2 uh secondly i would hope that it's not the same bozos that released the game half-baked. Um, because as it's well aware, Battlefront 2 became a great video game. We had a lot of good content. You had the Solo, the Last Jedi, we got, you know, Obi-Wan, Anakin, um, Republic Commandos, Arc Troopers, Droidicas... More than we could have ever asked for. Um, then DICE decided to uh, pull the team off of the game and send them to work on Battlefield 2042. So... Other than that, um, I will once again ask the chat to... ...the disc Discord chat. Um, the... Only open world Star Wars game that I remember hearing about got cancelled last year, I think. So, um, I don't, I don't think there is a open world Star Wars game in the works. Um, you'd think, actually, that's not true. That's not true. The new Lego Star Wars game, uh, the Skywalker saga, or whatever it's called, uh, is open world technically. So there you go, open world Star Wars game coming coming uh, this year. Eventually, I don't know. They might delay it again. Um, now, I like I said last last episode. Um, Disney is not doing great with Star Wars games. Um, they're not. They're they're doing bad. Terrible. We uh, we're not getting as many games as we should, nor are they the quality that they should be. 
Um, I'm not going to go into that again. Don't want to don't want to beat a dead horse. I think everyone can agree that Disney sucks at Star Wars video games. Uh, they should uh, uh, bring back 1313. That was a great idea. That was going to be good. Uh, young Boba Fett. Right? That'd be amazing, given the fact that everybody's about Boba Fett right now. So, they'd, they'd eat up that game. But, no, instead they decided to, to give us a battle royale with, with bounty hunters. So, yeah. Well. Oh, yeah, Boba Fett, the guy from Fortnite. <laughs> those memes again well anyways I, I I think I think uh I think that's all she wrote for this for this episode so uh thanks for listening and uh make sure to tune in again next Wednesday to hear more of my Star Wars opinions. So thank thank you guys once again. <laughs>